Classic September 546, Greatest Hits Radio at Drive Time. Summer Confessions, here we go. It's an autumnal song, but it's a summer confession on the way, and if you have one, we would love to hear it. You send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. That's the way it works. Uh, Brother Matthew uh, is in for his birthday appearance. Hello, everyone. Uh, <laughs> Sister Katie Susie in charge of the show today, yes. making sure everything is as tip-top as is ever likely to be. <laughs> Today's comes from Pammy. Pammy says, Father Simon, Sister Katie Susie, and the brother who forgives everything as he has the morals of a sewer rat. Correct. I have had this burden for quite a while now. It's my trauma for sure, but it was shared by many, and it still gives me nightmares. I shudder as I type. I'm looking to apologize to lots of holiday makers on the beach in Tenerife a few years ago. We were having a lovely holiday, a family holiday, all together. Me and my husband... We have three children in their early teens, and we were all staying at one of the many fabulous hotels out there. Now, obviously, these are good times for family bonding, but also, as I think you know, all five of you, all together, all the time, can be stressful. So we thought it would be a really nice idea if Hubby and I could have a couple of hours at the beach, kids-free. We made sure the kids had lots to do, of course, and off we went. We were laid back. We were having a lovely time. Chilling, cold drinks, peace and quiet. When husband says, Shall we have a swim in the sea then? <laughs> <coughs> Captain Birdseye. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I said, I'm not fond of the sea, as you jolly well know, so I'll leave it, thank you very much. He said, Come on in just for a paddle. <laughs> So, what is it with these guys? Why won't they take a hint? He knows I don't like the sea. Anyway, for the sake of the perfect family holiday, I went in with hubby holding my hand, all romantic-like. A few inches of water were okay. The sea lapping my toes, just about okay. But then he pulled me further in because that's what men do, and all of a sudden... (laughs) I saw a massive wave coming, and although it probably wasn't in my head, it was like the 90-foot wave that sank the SS Poseidon oh. in the Poseidon Adventure in 1972 with Gene Hackman of course, and Shelley Winters. Yes. And Shelley Winters, who doesn't make it. Oh, does, a bit of a spoiler. Does, a bit of a, it's oh, a long time. About that. It's yeah. a long time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it looked like in my head. I decided to see if I could outrun the wave. Well, it turns out you can't outrun a massive wave, which is actually about two foot high. Yeah. Even if I thought I was Pamela Anderson in Baywatch. Well, I lost my husband's hand. I went under. He reached in as I thrashed about. He pulled me up and I stomped out of the sea in a waddling sort of way. My ears were full of sea and sand. My eyes were streaming and I was shaking like a leaf. My head was full of noise, so I had missed a few things. I had missed that there was seaweed and an actual crab in my hair. Oh. Also, shall we say, a few strands of seaweed in the back of my bikini bottoms. I had also missed that the whole beach was agog because I had missed that my bikini top uh, was actually at least a foot lower than it should have uh, been. Yeah. Essentially, yeah. it was round my waist. Yeah. I looked like something from a very cheap film indeed, <laughs> the kind they show late at night on Men at Motors, if that <laughs> is still a, still a, that still a channel. No, I, I don't think so. Think so. <laughs> it's men and motors, surely, not is men it? at motors. Oh, okay, whatever. <laughs> anyway, on this beach in Tenerife, all eyes were my way. People were covering their kids' eyes. I just held my head high, walked back to the sun lounger, pulled everything up, tightened what needed to be tightened, mm-hmm. yeah. got rid of the seaweed and the crab, which is actually dead. I put my sunglasses <laughs> on my head. So, Father Simon, I do need forgiveness, though, not from my husband, because it was actually his fault, but from all the inhabitants of the beach that day who got slightly more than they bargained for, and it was basically all his fault. I'm at your mercy. Let's see what everybody makes of it, Sister Katie Susie, first of all. Yeah, Pammy, I think that your husband is the one that should be asking for forgiveness. I don't really think that you did anything wrong there. Um, also really enjoyed that your husband sounds the exact same as the Danish nun. Um, <laughs> yes, <it does. laughs> I don't know <laughs> if there's a crossover there. Maybe, um, yeah. But yeah, Pammy, I think you're forgiven, but I wouldn't forgive your husband. Maybe Pammy's husband has another life. Oh, yeah. Yeah, as a Danish nun. Oh, Danish <laughs> Captain Birdseye. <laughs> um, 
Yes. Uh, brother from another yes, guy. Yes, I mean, the thrashing about in the water, I think I think it's all fine. I don't think there's anything to forgive here because, frankly, um, our continental cousins will have been quite used to that kind of <laughs> what? Uh, attire coming out of the uh, coming out of the Did water. Think- That's what uh, they all do over there. So <laughs> I am going to forgive... <laughs> Because well, they, very, it's abroad. They're very enlightened <laughs> in a way, uh, and in another way, a little too enlightened. So um, I'm going to forgive. <laughs> okay, can, can of worms there, I, I thought. Okay, so it's the people's verdict. What we'd like to know is do you forgive Pammy for today's beach confession? Uh, if you do, you know what you have to do. You text 61054, you start your message with Simon, or you can email simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. And if you think you have a confession, it has its own email box, which is a very exciting thing. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Uh, the confession tonight came from Pam. Uh, it was one of those beach catastrophes. Oh, yes. Her husband clearly knew she didn't want to go into the sea, uh-huh. and this is precisely the reason why a 90-foot wave, which was actually two Probably foot, uh, she went under and she uh, came out with slightly uh, less clothing than she needed for yep. that walk back to mm-hmm. the uh, to the bed. So, uh, let's see what the people's verdict is. Here it comes. Lisa Phipps in Flincher says, Forgiven, this is exactly what happens to me when I get dragged into the sea by my husband. Definitely. Definitely do not forgive Pammy's husband, though. Uh, Mark and Drayton, not forgiven. Never give in to peer pressure. Doesn't work. And definitely works. And Serena finally says, forgiven. This brings back memories of 1983 in Cornwall. My husband and I enjoying being thrown about by the waves when I finally emerged from the water, not like Bo Derek, but with my bikini top around my neck. Oh. Happens all the time. Do you want to say what that actually was written on the original email, which you've just very helpfully changed slightly? Bob Derek. Bob Derek. <laughs> yes. Oh. That'll be an, an interesting remake. Uh, okay, thanks very much for that. So, your summer confessions, any kind of confession you like, we would like to see it and exchange it possibly for a smart speaker. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. Well, it's confession time. I know that because Matt's got his confessions book out. Yep. Yes, one book that he writes all of the all, writes I notes. Do. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, they make no sense either. Yes, but, you know, auction them off. <laughs> going to be huge. Is that right? You're going yeah. to auction them off for what? I'm going to call it art and uh, <laughs> craft. Yeah. Uh, today's confession comes from Jonah. Jonah gets today's smart speaker. Thank you, Jonah. Good afternoon, Simon and compassionate compatriots. My confession takes me back to early 2008 when I was working for a company on a site that is no longer open. Maybe that is my fault. You're about to judge. There used to be telephones in the various sections of this place where I used to work. (laughs) And I found out, as many people have, that by pressing nine you could get an outside line. And so I started entering various competitions in newspapers. (laughs) That had premium rate numbers. Uh, Thank you very much. Let's see what I can win here. I actually had a lot of success using my firm's phone. I won a state-of-the-art television. A holiday for two to Chicago. Wow. Along with several other lesser prizes like cases of wine, bags of cosmetics and a crate of lemon curd. Who knew? Anyway, basically, if there was a competition, I'd enter it. On the firm's phone and in the firm's time. Wow. Wow. Now, there had been a film premiere recently of the new Tom Hanks, Julia Roberts film, Charlie Wilson's War. Oh, yeah. At the Empire Cinema in Leicester Square in London. It had been well received and had a screenplay by Aaron Sorkin. Yeah. You might remember it. Yes, indeed, I do. Yeah. There was quite a buzz, as you can imagine. Anyway, Tom Hanks had autographed the A of War, which had been printed on the red carpet in white letters. There was a competition in the Daily Mirror to win this, so naturally, I phoned up and entered. I can't remember what I had to do, but it was probably answer a question like, what's Tom Hanks' first name? Something like that. Anyway, surprisingly, I got it right. I thought nothing else of it until a couple of weeks later when I got a ho- when I got home from work. Our neighbour was stood outside her house, arms folded, and said, I've got a delivery for you. <laughs> You're going to have to come in and get it, as it's heavy. I thought her tone was a little bit off, to be honest. She'd taken in many parcels for us over the years. Never seemed to mind. It's what neighbours do. Take a parcel for number three, Gov. Sure. Add it to the mountain. Put it there with all the others. Right you are, Gov. That's the way it goes. But like I said, she was definitely off with me. All huffy and puffy. And hoity and toity. 
Negative energy vibes are plenty. Anyway, we went in, and at this point, I saw what the problem was. I was confronted with a partly rolled up red carpet. The rolled up bit was in front of me, but the rest ran up the full length of her staircase. Wow. Angled her up, ang angled upstairs onto the landing and into the bedroom. There was absolutely miles of it. It could have gone from Leicester Square to Piccadilly Circus down to the Houses of Parliament and back again. Now, in entering the competition, I'd assumed I'd be winning the autographed A of War, signed by Tom Hanks, but no, I'd won the entire red carpet. <laughs> what? It was huge. I had to phone my brother to help me move out, it, move it into my house. My wife was also none too happy when she got home from work to find my new prize running up the length of our staircase, then into the bathroom where the, where the rest of the carpet sat coiled in the bath. <laughs> Now, here's the thing, Father. I mean, it's not really a great prize, is it? Really? Not An really. entire red carpet. A long and thin carpet. No use to anybody. Here's the thing, Father. So, I need to seek forgiveness, not from my employers, although they did go under. <laughs> uh, I think this was because of government cutbacks, not because of a huge phone bill. Well, I'm going to say it was the phone mm, bill. Though I, I suppose it, it kind of helped. They did say excessive and needless costs. Yeah. Uh, it might have had something to do with me, I suppose. I also don't seek forgiveness from my wife, who threatened to bury me in the carpet if I didn't get rid of it. <laughs> I eventually cut the autographed A from war, which is in the loft somewhere. I took the rest of the dump. <laughs> Very nice. However... I really need forgiveness from my neighbour. Remember her? The huffy and puffy one? The hoity and toity one? She it was who took delivery of this thing in the first place. But what I only learnt later was that when she had uncoiled the carpet a bit, her mother, who lives with her upstairs, had to stay upstairs all day because she couldn't access her stairs. <laughs> <laughs> My neighbour managed to take a few things up for her to eat during the day, but she felt the new unlaid carpet was a trip hazard and told her mother to stay where she was. Anyway, so I thought an interesting, an interesting end to the tale. So there's the story, and uh, Jonah it is who wants as much forgiveness as he can muster from that tale with Sister Susie, the voice of authority well, and responsibility. Jonah, that really wasn't nice to that neighbour's mum. She had to stay upstairs all day. That's not fair. <laughs> if, you if you can't access the stair lift, then <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> she shouldn't have put the carpet in the stairs, really, oh, should she? True. However, you just need to pay attention to what you're actually winning. But regardless of that, you need to not do it on the work's phone number. That's not... You're not paying for that. Therefore, you don't technically deserve to win the prizes. They were won by the company who paid for the phone calls or yes. didn't pay because they got made uh, and they went back from bankrupt. But I, I'm not going to forgive. Uh, harsh but fair. Brother I mean, that is gutter. true. So we should be giving the red carpet to that firm. Yeah. And but the yes. firm doesn't exist and, anymore. And, and then the firm gets the trip to Chicago and, and everything else. Um, I'm going to forgive, uh, <laughs> mainly because what, I mean, the, the, the neighbour takes delivery of the red carpet and then decides to store it on top of the stir lift. Well, that's the, that's down to the neighbour. And now the, the, um, uh, neighbour's mother can't come down the stairs. I say, where does the blame lie there, Suze? It it lies <laughs> with the neighbour, and for that reason, just, I choose to forgive. Just yes, making it what? Up as I go along. along. I don't know what you're really? talking about. What a load of hogwash that was. You see? Yes. Anyway, so <laughs> makes no sense. <laughs> Absolutely made no sense at all. Do you forgive Jonah for all of those assaulted crimes? On the phone, and then ends up with a carpet. And next door's mum can't come down, which <laughs> can't access the stair. <laughs> They're obviously not a funny matter. Uh, forgiven or not, on the text, please. 61054, first word is Simon. Uh, our confession came from Jonah, uh, who made lots of phone calls on his work phone by dialing nine for the outside line. Won a lot of competitions, including a red carpet from a big premiere in the West End, which took out... Uh, first of all, his neighbour's house, then took out his house <laughs> and stopped the neighbour's mother actually coming down for a whole day. The people's verdict is in. Here it is. So, Jerry, not forgiven. Uh, dialing nine for an outside line was a whipping offence where I worked. No wonder the poor firm went on to say nothing about the poor neighbour. Uh, Hannah says not forgiven. I do think they should be asking for forgiveness from their employer. It's definitely the reason for them going under. Those competitions are costly. Uh, but Lisa says forgiven because I too am very guilty of entering all the competitions. 
competitions and giveaways imaginable. You've got to be in it to win it. If you have a tale for us, it's confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. If we use it, you get a smart speaker. It's confession time. Uh, we're live in the saloon bar, I think, uh, if Susie's there with our drink of the day. Uh, what do we yes. have today? Well, maybe a slight twist on a gin and tonic today. A yes. Tom Collins cocktail. Oh, okay. which is What's that? Gin, a bit of sugar syrup, yeah. a squeeze of a lemon, some lemon juice, and then soda water to top it up. So it's a bit longer than a gin and tonic, but very refreshing if it's still warm where you are. Very good. And if you're looking for a, a non-alcoholic alternative, there's a glass of milk in the fridge. <laughs> oh, <laughs> lovely. I, I think that's mm. quite helpful. Yeah. So it's confession time, and today's comes from Jeremy. Jeremy, thank you very much indeed for sending this in, Father Simon and the Committed Collective. Uh, is this okay? Yes, I think this is fine. Uh, I feel that the time has come in my life to air my confession and seek forgiveness for the eventful day in July 1991 when my grandfather passed away at the ripe old age of 89. My grandparents and the majority of the extended family lived in Hampshire, whilst my parents, together with me and my other siblings, lived up north in Lincolnshire. Due to work commitments and probably other family politics that I can't remember now, I was the chosen one who got the task, who got the duty, to take my mother down to Hampshire for the funeral to be held at Southampton Crematorium. The instructions duly taken by landline, no mobile phones to text on, back in those days, we set off the day before to allow plenty of time for the 10 a.m. service the following morning. That is an early one. It is. Mm -hmm. Hence the problem. A day of reflection in the car as we drove down where my mother regaled us with stories of how she first met her in-laws and memories of happy times gone by helped pass uh, the then very long journey down to the travel lodge for a night's day prior to the family meet-up the following day. Arising early on the day of the funeral, I dressed in my then top man suit and had a quick breakfast before getting into the car for the short drive into the city following my mum's carefully written down uh, directions and instructions to get to the crematorium. All started well, and then the traffic ground to a halt on the ring road with nothing moving in either direction. We sat and waited patiently. Time ticked on. The witching hour of 10am was fast approaching. We were going to be late. Traffic, just as we started to despair, then started to ease slowly, and our hopes reappeared. Maybe, maybe we had a last-minute chance to get to the creme on time. Well, we made it to the crematorium car park, which by now was full. Uh, 10 a.m. had been and gone, but we were not deterred. We abandoned the car at the very end of the car park and hot-footed it down to the very long driveway to the entrance. East or West Chapel, I shouted to my mum (laughs) as we flew in the entrance. The colour drained from her face was an instant giveaway she didn't have a clue. Looking on the board, I could see my granddad's name in the daily running order, or order of service. (laughs) Yeah, running order. (laughs) And I could see We rushed over to the East Chapel entrance and slowly opened the door. Given that this was a modern building, surely someone in the council could have afforded a can of WD-40, but alas not, Uh, as the door gave out an almighty squeak as we slowly opened it, nodding and bowing our heads in respect and embarrassment as we edged our way in and took our seats a few rows in on the right-hand side. We picked up the order of service and settled in, congratulating ourselves on mission accomplished. Having had a few minutes to compose myself, I asked my mum if that was Auntie Marion on the right next to my gran. Uh. My mum, looking at the back of the head, started to say who she thought they all were, and then stopped when she got to my gran and my Uncle Malcolm. Uncle Malcolm was a very large, broad-shouldered, gentle giant. So the four-foot guy with an (laughs) ill-fitting suit next to my gran, who had somehow dyed her grey hair jet black, wasn't really fitting the bill. And at that point, the vicar said, We will now sing one of Clive's favourite hymns. Oh, no. And the penny dropped that we were in the wrong service, in the wrong chapel. The music began playing from the speakers, and we hightailed out of there and set off down the corridor like two naughty school children to the other chapel. Given that there were only two chapels, this had to be the right one, and as I opened the door, we could see my gran and uncle just leaving via the exit at the back towards the Garden of Remembrance. Other members of the family were starting to follow. We had missed the service. Uh. But my quick-thinking mum said, quick, join the back of the crowd, the back of the crowd, and we'll follow them out. 
<coughs> Once outside, we congratulated ourselves on our mission and then made our way to the immediate family to offer what I thought would be apologies. Stood next to my mum, she gave my gran, uncle, aunt and the rest of the clan a kiss before opening her mouth and saying, beautiful service, Ted would have been so proud. <laughs> I stood there looking like some kind of demented goldfish, my mouth opening and closing, but no words coming out at the sheer shock of my mum's lies. <laughs> and astounded that she could put on such a front, my uncle turned to me and we exchanged the usual pleasantries, and he then asked what I was holding in my hand. Uh, an order of service, I said. Why is yours green and all oh, no. everyone else's is white? <laughs> Now, I can tell a white lie with the best of them, but my mind was blank. My face was reddening and the world was closing in on me. At that point, a voice behind me piped up, Oh, he collects them. <laughs> <laughs> turning, oh, yeah, of course he does. Turning to see my mum, announcing this like it was some fantastic idea. <laughs> of course it's not unusual. I mean, surely everyone has a son who collects funeral orders of service. Oh, no. Look at, no. Looking at me like I had literally just fallen from the sky, my <laughs> uncle handed me his and said, you better have this one then, <laughs> and turned to talk to anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> Walking back to the car, my mum announced, I think that went okay. No. And we both just fell about laughing like two demented hyenas before getting into the car uh, and the icing on the cake being a parking ticket stuck to the window. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. Brother Simon, I seek forgiveness for our lies as we never did let on. Though we missed the family funeral, and now with many of the congregation no longer with us, we can't formally confess to them, and so we seek your forgiveness instead. And, uh, no, I didn't keep the order of service, and neither do I collect them. No. Uh, just for the record. <laughs> but what a, what a fast-thinking mother that was. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy needing uh, forgiveness because most of the congregation no longer with us, but maybe Sister Susie can speak for everybody. Here we go. Well, I just... I just can't get, quite get over his mum. I just don't think he needs, needs forgiveness at all. I think she does. You, you know, you managed to get there. The chances are that there were two funerals happening at the same time in different chapels. It's just bad luck, really. Your mum managed to get through quite a few of the congregation before she realised she was in the wrong one. Yes. And you'll forever be known, Jeremy, as the person who collects order of services in your family. You're going to be that weird one. So for that reason, I forgive you. It's not your fault, and it's a bit mean. A brother from another guy. I mean, definitely. Let's let's congratulate the mother here. <laughs> what, what quick thinking that is. He collects orders of service. He's a bit macabre, is Jeremy. <laughs> Always had my doubts. I love, I love, I love also her beautiful service. Beautiful service. <laughs> it's a bit like wedding lineups, which we all hate. And you've got to say something. Beautiful service. Beautiful service. You must be so proud. You must be so proud. Uh, so, yes, uh, definitely forgiven. Well done. Yes, okay. So, double forgiveness here. But the, the thing is, uh, the people's verdict. Do you forgive Jeremy? Yes or no? On the text, please. 61054. You can start your message with Simon. You can email simon at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. People's verdict in the next hour, please. 61054 on the text. Start your message with Simon. It's 11 minutes after 6 o'clock. We had a confession uh, from Jeremy. All names changed, of course. Uh, it was about a funeral. They were uh, about a crematorium uh, event, and they were late. Uh, Jeremy and his mother. Uh, they went to the wrong event, but they kind of uh, just pretended that they'd been yeah, there. Yeah. Even though Jeremy had the wrong order of service, which his mum said it was a hobby. That's what he did. <laughs> he collects funeral orders of service. Uh, anyway, it was a fine story said by Jeremy. The People's Verdict is in and here it is. So Richard in Ludlow says definitely forgiven if for no other reason than that's the first time I've he ever heard Sister Susie forgive. Uh, Jeff in Featherston, Halifax says forgiven. We were once going to a funeral in Glasgow, got completely lost, then hit on the idea of stopping it at Undertaker's to ask the way. We got there just in time. And finally, Sandra says, Forgiven, my husband and I did something similar at a friend's wedding years ago. We missed it, but then mingled with other guests and murmured, beautiful ceremony to the others around us. We nearly got ca caught out, however, when we had to watch the video with the happy couple uh -huh. months later. They mentioned a few times while we were watching it, we can't see you anywhere, to which our reply was, oh, we're over there behind that large <laughs> pillar. They never found out. Uh, they found out now, so maybe you have a wedding or funeral-based confession. Yes. Uh, we think you probably do, and if so, we'd like to exchange it for a smart speaker. Jeremy's gets today's, and if you've got one, you said it too. Confessions at greatesthitsradio.co. It's 5.46... 
And let's go uh, live to the saloon bar of the Suze's Arms. Uh, <laughs> oh, I wish it was called that. Uh, what is our drink of the day, by the way? I'm um, going with a nice crisp glass of rosé, I think, today. I had a lovely one called Maya, which was from France. Um, and it was a Grenache, a Sinsalt and a oh. Mauverdre blend, which was very delicious. Very 125 mil or 250? Always 250. Always 250. Very good. How much <laughs> would that cost me? Um, I don't know, actually. Free! It's on the I'll house, put it on my everybody. Tab. It's on the house. <laughs> right. Very good. Okay, so today's uh, tale, uh, last of the week, comes from DJ Saucy Boy, uh, known as oh King oh of the dear. Nightclubs. Okay. Oh, dear. I know. <laughs> Father Simon and the Ecclesiastical Collective, I recently heard a holiday confession, so decided it was time for myself to confess to an incident I inadvertently played a part in back in 1989. Though personally, I never really got to enjoy a lad's holiday, as I was always far too busy working. Yes, 1989, at the age of just 20, when my school friends were going abroad for their rites of passage holiday, instead I settled into my first of several seasons enjoying the sun, sea and sand and some superb music because I was a DJ um, in a particular holiday hotspot at the southern end of Corfu. Hence my name, DJ Saucy Boy, yeah. King of the Nightclubs. <laughs> Back wow. then, the emerging resort was somewhat smaller than it is now, and pretty much half of it, the accommodation, bars and restaurants, were all owned by two Greek brothers. Let's call them Adonis and Achilles. <laughs> they also owned the Flash nightclub, where I was one of the two resident DJs along, alongside my DJ friend, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Without a name. Yeah. Bear in mind, this was decades before the internet or smartphones allowing people to fact-check anything. I mean, at this time, we were still working with vinyl. I have to say, being a DJ, there was, it was a tough job, but someone had to do it. Along the strip, the brothers ran nine bars. Each one had a DJ. Though we mostly lost touch over the years, some of us have reconnected uh, over the years through social media. Now, I personally dislike using words like crazy, zany or bonkers, uh, but there was good. one DJ amongst us who could only be described as a colossal combination oh. of crazy, zany and bonkers, yeah, no. a larger-than-life mm. character we'll call Gary. So here's what I, we and all of us who played a part in this unexpected and unplanned event wish to seek forgiveness for. As Flash, the nightclub, didn't open until 11 p.m. Brian and myself would pop into the various bars along the strip until one of us would go and do the first lonely hour until the club started to fill up. So there was Brian and myself mid-season enjoying a pre-work drink in Manhattans when we heard Gary say over the microphone, Don't forget, Greek summertime ends tonight! And you must put your watch back by an hour. That's Greek summertime ending tonight. <laughs> it, it, Brian worked for the Sweeney. Uh, yeah, he did. <laughs> the way Gary delivered the line was so believable, so matter-of-fact, I nearly spat my ouzo out. Then he repeated it a few minutes later, and then again. Now, I'm not quite sure how this next bit took on a life of its own and happened so fast, but it did. Possibly because I mentioned Gary's made-up public service announcement to every DJ along the strip, and each then also heard this valuable and essential information in their own bars, the news that the Greek summertime was ending tonight and clocks had to go back by an hour and it all spread across the resort like the proverbial Greek wildfire. I can't recall for certain, but perhaps Brian and myself also mentioned it a couple of times as we uh, hit the tracks. I think there was Technotronic, Ten City and Double Trouble and Rebel MC. Oh, yeah. And then in between us saying, don't forget, Greek summertime ends tonight. Anyway, by the end of the last record... Uh, and the club closing, the message was well and truly out there across the whole of the resort. Except that, of course, the clocks did not need changing. There was no such thing as the clocks going back for Greek summertime when we were saying it. So here's what we seek redemption for. Given that we didn't really do mornings, none of us were around to actually witness firsthand what actually happened the next day, but we certainly heard about it. Yes, we heard about the holiday reps banging and battering on hungover clients' doors, shouting, your transfer coach is waiting <laughs> to be met with partially <laughs> conscious replies not quite as polite as could you go away please you're an hour early or if you're not outside in five minutes the excursion tour which you've paid handsomely for <laughs> will be leaving without you the response <laughs> being quite fruity but basically saying you're an hour wrong Yes, inadvertently, we had managed to set a large amount of the resort back by an hour, uh, and this time was 
The whole place was... I'm just changing it. The whole, <laughs> <laughs> the whole place was in chaos. Even some people who, who had booked bed and breakfast arrived an hour late for their coffee and croissants to find they'd stopped serving. I suppose, though we suppose, the collection of 1989 DJs should seek forgiveness from all the Tommy tourists, as we called them, hilarious. Tommy tourists. Who were affected and had to quickly comply with the requests of the stressed out holiday reps. Though it wasn't just us, as the resort is the furthest south from the airport, therefore the first transfer pickup, there was also a knock-on effect with coaches running late across the island. Were flights missed? Yes, I'm afraid to say that they were. <sighs> To all those inconvenienced, on behalf of all the DJs involved, I seek forgiveness. Adonis and Achilles, who received so many complaints from the several tour operators, asked us never to do it again. As for seeking forgiveness for the hassle we caused the holiday reps, nah, not really. You see, they always thought that they had the upper hand and they were the most important people in the resort. Yeah. But no. we, we the DJs, we showed them who was in charge because we were in charge. Anyway, nice fade. Yeah, and I thought so. You can tell that I'm a... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, DJ Saucy Boy, known as King of the Nightclubs. Uh, yeah. Interesting DJ confession. Uh, what do you say, Sister Susie, the voice of responsibility? Well, I'm shaking my head here, DJ Saucy Boy. It just, it was just, it could just caused absolute bedlam. And what for? Just so you could get the upper hand on the, on the, on the other guys? No, it's not good enough. You were drinking Uzo, which I don't like. You called them Tommy Tourists. People miss flights. You mess with a lot of lives. Yes. No, not forgiven. It wasn't funny. Harsh words, but I think <laughs> fair words. Mm, uh, I mean, there's another side to that coin. I mean, this is clearly uh, how urban myth spread, isn't it? With with so many people believing what the what the DJ is telling me. Hey, am I alone in thinking that maybe Tommy Torres should have been checking his watch and double checking whether there was such a thing as the clocks going back that night? I think really Tommy Torres should have been sorting it out. Your watch and, doesn't tell you. Well, your watch, watch does. No, your watch tells you the time. That's what yeah. makes the whole point of watches and that's what i understand is happening here but given that they were playing black box clearly those tourists were right on time oh yes so well, no they weren't reason, they were late that reason doesn't matter <laughs> so you've done it again the way <laughs> i choose to forgive okay. oh it doesn't work uh, yes doesn't it definitely work. works <laughs> Very happy uh, the that. people's verdict, please, for <laughs> DJ Very Saucy good. Boy, King of the Nightclubs, oh, on the text 61054. Could you start your message with Simon? Or you can email simon at greatestitsradio.co.uk. Anyway, uh, we have the reaction, the people's verdict in to DJ Saucy Boy's Greek summertime that doesn't exist confession. And here it comes. So Jerry says, totally forgiven. They were only young and just having some fun. The rep should have known it wasn't a thing and corrected them. Becca says, I used to work as a rep and those DJs all thought they were better than us. And for that, I don't <laughs> forgive. Uh, and Irina says, as an ex-holiday rep in the Greek islands in the late 80s, uh -huh. I wholeheartedly forgive. Being stuck on a Greek island for six months may sound idyllic, but you do have to make your own entertainment. I remember my friend and I going down to the port after one particularly drunken night out and changing all the ferry times on the chalkboard. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Uh, there's another confession there. If you have one for us, we would love it. And then if we use it, you get a smart speaker. Send it to confessions at greatesthitsradio.co.uk. <laughs>